Today we will be talking about arches, mainly triumphal arches and the Arch of Constantine. There are several different kinds of arches that include circular decorative arches, flat structural arches, <coughs> natural rock arches, and aqueducts. Arches are generally made out of concrete, limestone, brick, travertine, or white marble and were often faced with a cheap stone or marble or stuccoed over. We see many of these different kinds of arches in our community and nation, but another type of arch we called triumphal arches are not a kind of arch that we see every day. We are now going to travel back to the time of great emperors and the Roman Empire. Triumphal arches are built in honor of emperors and generals. They are freestanding structures, usually with either one or three openings, and often have relief work on every available wall space. They also usually have a dedicatory inscription. The Arch of Constantine is a triumphal arch that was built in 315 AD in honor of Emperor Constantine. In 312, Constantine's army defeated the army of Maxentius at the Battle of Milvian Bridge. This victory is said to have brought peace to the Roman Empire, so to reward Constantine, the Senate awarded him with a triumphal arch. The Arch of Constantine is 84 feet wide and 69 feet high. It is considered the largest and best preserved of Roman War Memorials. It is located in the valley between Caelian Hill and the Palatine on the Via Triumphalis, the road that the Triumphal Procession passed, and in between the Colosseum and Forum Romanum. It is made out of various materials, including Numidium yellow marble, Phrygian purple marble, and a few different shades of white and gray marble. Constantine was a loved emperor as he was known as Constantine the Great. Constantine the Great, born as Flavius Valerius Aurelius Constantius Augustus, was born in Nisus, Upper Mesia, what is now Serbia, in some time between 274 and 288 AD. He was the son of Helena, an innkeeper's daughter, and Roman officer Constantius Chlorus. In 293 AD, Constantine became a member of the Diocletian court and later in 305 fought under the command of Galerius. Soon after, his father was named Emperor of the East and Constantine returned to serve in the court under his father. In 306 AD, when Constantine's father died, he was named Emperor or the new Augustus by his troops. Although Galerius was hesitant in giving Constantine the title of emperor, he reluctantly did so. In the next couple of years, while Maxentius and the emperors Severus and Galerius fought wars against each other, Constantine was busy fighting against the Germans to defend his territory. In 311, after Galerius died, Maxentius, a persecutor of Christians, tried to overthrow Constantine. In response to this, Constantine led his army to fight against Maxentius' army. In 312, at the Battle of Milvian Bridge, Constantine defeated Maxentius, and Christianity was now tolerated. In honor of this defeat that brought peace, he was given a triumphal arch by the Senate. In 325, Constantine became Emperor of all Rome. Emperor Constantine died in May 337 of a sudden illness. The relief art on the Arch of Constantine is a big part of it. Although the arch is named after Constantine, it also honors the good emperors of Rome, Trajan, Hadrian, and Marcus Aurelius, as many other statues and panels were borrowed from other monuments and arches. The Trajanic elements of the arch include statues of Dacian prisoners and two relief panels. The statues of Dacian prisoners are believed to have been borrowed from a Flavian monument in the first century AD. This statue represents Trajan because he conquered the Dacians in the early first century AD. Similar statues are found in Trajan's forum. The two relief panels have also been thought to have been borrowed from Trajan as they show the battle with the Dacians and several inscriptions that let on the victor whose face was recut to be Constantine's was crowned by the goddess Victory. The Hadrianic elements include eight roundels that are thought to have been borrowed from a Hadrianic monument. These roundels display scenes of hunting and sacrifice. Although the faces in the scenes have been recut so that it was Constantine's face, it is believed that Hadrian and Antoninus Pius were the original characters in the scene. 
The Marcus Aurelian elements decorate the attic of the arch. Several panels are believed to have been borrowed from an unknown monument built by Commodus in the honor of his father, Marcus Aurelius. The panels display stages of a campaign against the Germans. The original panels are thought to have been designed for Marcus Aurelius because he led a campaign against the Germans. But again, his face has been cut out and Constantine's has been put in his place. There are also many other triumphal arches built in honor of Roman emperors, including the arches of Septimius Severus, Augustus, and Titus. Other triumphal arches around the world include Arc de Triomphe in Paris and the Arch of Triumph in Korea. The Arch of Constantine is a great example of an arch, and I hope you enjoyed learning about this Roman architectural structure. Thank you!